Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to part four of the ATM series. In this video, we're gonna create these buttons. We're also gonna create a class for each one of the buttons, except for the exit button, because this is just gonna take us back to the start page. The withdraw button is gonna take us to the withdraw page, deposit, deposit page, and balance to the balance page. Okay, let's go create those classes. Let's open up our file. I want you to scroll all the way to the bottom, and I want you to copy and paste this page two down here. And let's do it one more time. Now let's change the name of this to the withdraw page. This is the deposit page. And this is the balance page. We also have to add them to our container at the very top in here. So we change this to the withdraw page. And we added the deposit page and balance page. All right, now let's pick up where we left off. Right here in the menu page, right under selection label. Let's look at our blueprint. Before we add these buttons, we're gonna add a frame. That way we could add the buttons on top of it. Let's call it the button frame. Let's give it a color. Let's go to w3schools.com. And I'm gonna go with this shade of that blue, 25%. This packet. We're gonna give it a fill of both. We want it to expand on the X and Y axis. And we're gonna give it an expand of true. That way it fills up the rest of the space. All right, there's our frame. Now we're gonna add our buttons over here. The first button is gonna be the withdraw button. So let's call it that. We want it on our button frame. We want it to say withdraw. And when the user clicks on this button, we want to call in a function withdraw. Let's create it up here. And this function is going to take the user over to the withdraw page. We're going to use the show frame function for this. Let's give this button a border. I'm gonna go with the ray style. Let's give it a border width of three. Let's set the width to 50 and the height to five. Let's place it on the grid. We want it in row zero, column zero. And we're gonna give it a patty of five because we wanna create separation between this button and the rest of the buttons. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, here's our button. Now let's create the rest of the buttons. We're just gonna copy and paste this code and we're gonna change the name to the deposit button.
and we want to change the location. This is going to be under the withdraw button, so it's going to be one row down. Let's do the same thing for the balance page or the balance button. And this is going to be underneath the deposit button. So this is going to be in row two. And let's do this one more time. This is for the exit button. And this is going to take us back to the start page. And this is going to be under the balance button. So this is going to be in row three. Let's check it out. All right, here are our buttons. The exit button is already working. This is just going to take us back to the start page. And that creates another problem here. You see the password is still there. We don't want it to be here after we leave and come back to the start page. So let's go fix that. Let's go to the start page. Let's go to the check password function here. After the user enters the correct password, we want to reset that password back to nothing. So we're going to use dot set for this and we're going to include an empty string in there. But we actually have another problem. Let me show you. Let's enter the incorrect password. Let's go back to the star page and the password is gone, but this label is still displaying incorrect password. Let's fix that. So after we set the password back to an empty string, we have to set this incorrect password label back to an empty string as well. We're gonna set this to an empty string. Let's try it again. And now both of those things are gone. All right, let's go back to the main menu and let's click on the withdraw page. This is the withdraw page. It doesn't have anything in it, but we're about to add some stuff on it. Let's look at our blueprint and notice that the header for this page is the same one that we've been using for the other pages. So we're going to copy and paste that. And we're just going to copy and paste this label as well, because if you notice the page that we just worked on has that label as well, we're just going to change main menu to choose the amount you want to withdraw. We're also going to copy and paste this bottom frame from the other pages because it's the exact same one and that's going to save us a lot of time. All right, let's go down to the withdraw page. Before we go down to the withdraw page, let's copy and paste this heading label and the main menu label from the main menu page. So just control C for that and let's paste it over here on our withdraw page. Fix the indentation. And we're also gonna copy the bottom frame from the menu page. So go back up to the menu page and start from bottom frame. And I want you to copy all the way to where it says tick here. Paste it under this main menu label. And let's change the color of this frame. This is the frame that's holding all the widgets that we're adding to it. We're going to use the same color that we've been using for the other widgets. Let's change this text to choose the amount you want to withdraw. And let's change the name of the label. This is going to be the choose amount label. All 
All right, let's run it. Now let's add a frame to it. Let's do it here under the choose amount label. So let's create a frame. Let's call it the button frame, just like the one we created for the menu page. We could actually just copy it and paste it down as well. And we're gonna give it a color. Let's go back to this website. And we're gonna use the 25% again. Let's pack it. And we're also gonna give this a fill of both. And expand of true. Let's see that. There's the frame. Before we wrap things up, notice the time has a zero one for the hour. We don't want that zero to display. Let's go over to the time label. And in here where it says current time, I want you to include L strip. Zero, and we're also gonna use replace. So we want to replace the zero with nothing. And we're going to have to do this for each one of the pages. So I'm just going to control C that. And I'm going to paste it in the other tick functions. And I believe that's all of them. Yep, let's try it again. And the zero is gone. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I'll see you guys in part five.